Job chapter 8, verse 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Mahasham, Yahweh Shai, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Yahshua, and salutation to the Akim throughout the four corners of the earth, preaching the truth and sincerity, and keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai and the gospel. This is Yahweh Yaala. I just wanted to go into uh, another series, you know, looking to do through the spirit, which basically will kind of be centered, you know, on, the, you know, the middle age or you know, pretty much ancient icons, all right, of our forefathers, and uh, basically, you know, part of the reason why I'm doing this lesson is just to kind of just bring further edification of, uh, you know, Jake ruling, you know, especially going back into the Middle Ages and kind of just making sure that, you know, that vibration is pushed out there, you know, about the history, you know, of our, of our nation, okay, and uh, that's one of the things that's been hidden from the rest of the world, all right, um, including, you know, when it's about the world, it's about the inhabitants of the world, but also, you know, to two thirds of our people, you know, so some people know a little bit about a few different people here and there, but you know, this is kind of done to kind of show, you know, on a further level, you know, other uh, of our forefathers that were around during the time of uh, primarily the Middle Ages, right, when we were ruling uh, back then during that thousand year reign, which was uh, basically prophesied, you know, to happen, you know, even in the book of uh, Revelations, all right, now, kind of just briefly go into just the meaning of the word icon, you know, so that way people ain't getting bugged out thinking it's uh, meaning meaning something else like an idol or something, all right? Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and go to etymologyonline.com. Uh, it says icon. It says also icon in the, 17, in the 1570s. Image, figure, picture. Also statue from light, late Latin icon from Greek icon. Likeness, image, portrait, image in a mirror, a semblance, phantom image. There you understand it's basically just talking about a picture, image, or or a figure. All right, so this one that I'm referring to is uh, Nikiferis Botanietis, came from a line of emperors of the Byzantine Empire, going back to the 11th century. Okay, and uh, for this particular one, he was from an a actual family line that was, you know, or the emperors and had an influence back during that time. Okay, so basically he came through that same, you know, family line and, you know, there's various pictures, you know, Esau's very good at uh, breaking images. This is the reason why I'm just t titling this icon, this particular series, because, uh, you know, we know about iconoclasm, all right? Iconoclasm means that the breaking or the, or the breaking of images, all right? Or basically what you would call you know, what you see with Cesare Borgia and all these other, you know, images that Esau's created to kind of cover up our history, all right? So this is basically just bringing out just the true iconic image just of our people from back then during that time because the thing about it is there were so many images that Esau really couldn't destroy all of them, all right? Now, you can tell in some pictures that, you know, they're going to, they're, they're, they tried to do it, but they couldn't do it all the way. Um, and that's the reason why it's very important to kind of, you know, understand, you know, that there's going to be multiple depictions of the same person. All right. But when you get down to it, when you find, you know, when you find the authentic ones, because Esau is very good at replicating or at basically creating other images for his own history. So that way people will kind of not understand, OK, that these were, you know, so-called black people. All right. Well, basically uh, Israelites that ruled during this time in the middle ages okay now um not going to go too much into the history because really this is kind of focusing primarily on the you know the iconic images you know if the spirit allows in the future you know i'll be able to get into you know some more history which i'll get into briefly just for uh further ed edification all right now for this one you know nicol ferris the third he was actually part of the focus family right which is a, a byzantine family right and if you know anything about the byzantine empire that was the empire that took over when constantine came into rule back in the early part of the fourth century okay so during that time that byzantine empire had a, a very variety of different emperors as you can imagine over the course of about a thousand years okay now during this time uh this is the family that was ruling at that time, you know, after, you know, centuries, of course, after uh, Constantine, okay? Now, basically, 
as you see here, it says that the Focus was the name of a Byzantine aristocratic clan from Cappadocia, all right, which in the 9th and 10th centuries provided a series of high ranking generals and an emperor, Nicophorus II Focus. Right, its members and their clients monopolized the high command positions of the Byzantine army for much of the 10th century and led the successful Byzantine offensive against the Arabs in the east. All right, because see, this the thing about our people is that during this time we were holding down pretty much the whole earth, all right, and uh, primarily, of course, as you would know, you know, Europe as well, okay, and uh. As you would know, when you have an empire, when you have kingdoms, you're going to basically have enemies and you're going to go to war against them. And one of the things that uh, during that time is that you had the Arabs that were coming up, because if you think about it, this is why it's good to understand to know timelines as well. Right. By this time, Islam had already made started uh, coming up. OK, so this was a time of, uh, you know, a lot of battles and wars against pretty much, you know, Ishmael. All right, during this time. And if you know where the Byzantine Empire is, which I'll kind of go into in the maps. And as you read further on, it says, as one of the leading families of the Anatolian military aristocracy. All right, so basically you see here is that you have a region that this is talking about. All right, now the reason why it's very important to point out the region is because, you know, you want to kind of have a good understanding of where we're talking about, where, uh, you know, Nicophorus the third was situated at okay and it's very obvious that you know uh, when you read the scriptures that there's different places that are named over and over again or, or mentioned within the New Testament especially in um, in the book of Acts all right and in some of the epistles okay now I'm gonna kind of read this just uh, briefly just so we can get into it it says here this is a uh, first Peter 1 and 1 okay this is Peter an apostle of Yahweh Shah Mashiach to the strangers scattered, all right? Who are the strangers, right? The strangers, in fact, we'll just go into the word briefly just for edification. You know, because this is good, uh, good scripture for brothers to go into and break down every once in a while. Uh, we'll just go ahead and play it. Strong's G 3927. Pare Pidemas. Pare Pidemas. Right, so Parapidimas, it says here, one who comes from a foreign country into a city or land to reside there by the side of the natives, a stranger sojourning in a strange place, a foreigner. All right. So Peter was referring to the foreigners, the strangers, which would be Israelites who are living in a strange land, meaning a strange land, meaning that they're not in their homeland. Okay. Now, when you go into the word for scattered, that word there, I'm not going to play it, the audio for it. I'm going to just go ahead and read it because it should be, you know, easy to understand. This one is a uh, diaspora. All right. So you heard about the word diaspora. This is also the same word that's used when they talk about when uh, it, the Jews, all right, that were talking about where Yahweh Shah would go when he go into the dispersed amongst the Gentiles. This is the same word diaspora. Now, when you go into the word usage, it says a scattering dispersion of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations okay so that's what basically it means so it's plain and simple when you kind of look into that now as you read further along it says to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus Galatia Cappadocia Asia and Bithynia all right so pretty much if you look at the map right it's pretty much what you would call modern day Turkey all right because there's a history when it comes to that area um, that basically is always been a hotly contested area, you know, going back to the time of the ancient world, right? Even up until, you know, the time of the Ottoman Empire and, and everything like that. So it's good to have a good understanding of where things are to understand that there were Israelites in what was called modern day Turkey. And there's still going to be a remnant of our people there as well. OK, and there's a history with what happened with those people that were descendants of those same Israelites that stayed in that area, which, you know, uh, you know, Abu Rataza, I'll be able to get into in a future lesson to kind of bring more edification on the scattering all right, of Israel. All right. Now, just for the sake of this lesson, you know, just wanted to make sure that uh, those things were brought up, you know, concerning, you know, a little bit of touching on the history. And as you see at the picture of, uh, you know, Nico Forrest III, you can tell 100 percent that that's a Jake. 
And this is one of the pictures that they couldn't really deface, they couldn't uh, do their iconoclasm, they couldn't break the image, all right? So this is the reason why I'm kind of just bringing it out. Hopefully this is edifying to your brothers out there, you know, and uh, you can tell that uh, this, you know, is going to be some, hopefully some good, more good information that will st uh, still keep coming out, you know, just concerning the truth, all right, of the scriptures. And uh, again, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Yasharala, and salutation to the Akim throughout the four corners of the earth, preaching his truth and sincerity, keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai in the gospel. Shalom.